everybody, I'm Kisera and today we're going to talk about the worst books of 2018. These are not necessarily books that came out in 2018, these are just books that I read for the first time in 2018. All of the books on this list are not necessarily bad books, these books just didn't work for me but they may work for other people. The first books on this list are actually from a series that two of the books was in my most surprising books on this list, A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. I'll start with A Court of Thorns and Roses. So when I was reading this book, the first three quarters of this book felt like torture to get through. The only reason I got through this is because I was listening to an audiobook of The Help which has southern accents so as I was reading it I was just picturing the characters with southern accents the whole time but I honestly don't think I would have continued on with this book if it hadn't been for that. Two thirds to three quarters of the way through we finally find out what was going on the whole time. I think part of the reason is like the first half of this book is built around a relationship between the main character Feyre and another character named Tamlin and I just didn't feel any chemistry between the two characters and I didn't really like either of the characters very much. When we get to the next book in the series I actually kind of love all of the new characters that are introduced. The series definitely gets better but this first one just is really frustrating. And then we have A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. This is a novella following the events after A Court of Wings and Ruin which is the third novel in the series. When I bought this book, I didn't realize it was a novella. I thought it was the fourth book in the series. I thought it was just a continuation, but I got it and it's tiny. There was absolutely no substance. There was no reason to have this book. And I just felt like it was a waste of my money. The next book on this list is Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. So I read Red Queen for the first time this year and I actually really enjoyed Red Queen. I enjoyed it enough that I actually bought the entire series so that I can continue on with it. And then I read Glass Sword and I just was really bored. I didn't like the main character Mare Barrow in Glass Sword. I kind of liked her in Red Queen, the first book in the series, and I didn't think the romantic relationship that was happening was done really well. It honestly reminded me a lot of Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins, which I love the Hunger Games trilogy, but I really don't like Mockingjay. It really frustrates me. And this book frustrates me a lot too. I haven't continued on with the rest of the series, but I do have it on my shelf and I'm open to continuing on with it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this series and if you think it's worth continuing on or if you think I should just scrap it. The next book on this list is Air Awakens by Elise Kova. When I picked up this book, I was completely in the mood for a book like this. So this is a fantasy book with an elemental magic system. And the main character in this book is a librarian and at the beginning of the book, the prince is injured and she ends up saving him and when she saves him she finds out that she's actually a windwalker which is very rare in their society so the prince kind of takes her to study her magic so she's learning magic and there's this kind of relationship forming between her and the prince i probably would have really liked this series if it wasn't for the prince I did not like him at all. I didn't like his character. I thought he was very rude. I thought he was abusive. He like throws her off of a tower at one point in the story, which I understand she's a windwalker so she should be able to catch herself, but he shouldn't have thrown her off of a tower. Like that is not something that a love interest should do to the main character. And I just didn't like the way he treated her. I didn't like the way he spoke to her. Normally these kinds of things don't bother me in books, especially in in fantasy. But for some reason it just rubbed me the wrong way and I just don't want to continue on with the series. The next book in this list is Matched by Ali Conde. This is a YA dystopian novel and in the book when you turn a certain age you are matched with someone who is perfect for you. The main character in this book is matched with two different people but one of them is her actual match and the other one is a mistake or at least that's what she is told and basically it's her kind of trying to figure out which one of these guys that she wants and honestly it just felt like the love triangle was really poorly done. I wasn't really interested in either of the guys or either of the relationships and I just found it to be a really boring book. I feel like this kind of book is just way overdone and I didn't need another one of them. The next book on this list is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manan. So I didn't actually have very high hopes for this book going in. I was just kind of on a romantic contemporary binge reading cycle. So it was just one of the audiobooks that came up while I was doing this. I started listening to it and it started out pretty strong. So this is about a girl named Dimple who is being pressured by her parents into accepting an arranged marriage. 
So the guy in this marriage would be Rishi. She doesn't want to do this. She wants to go to a college program where there is a computer coding competition. And that's kind of where the crux of the problem is for me in this book. But the main plot of this book, I expected to be revolved around that coding competition. It turns out the main part of the book wasn't actually about the coding competition at all. There was a talent show within the coding competition and the main plot of the book revolved completely around the talent show in which Dimple, the main character, performs a dance routine. This just didn't work for me. In any coding competition, there wouldn't be a talent show as one of the main parts of the coding competition. And what really annoyed me even more later on is that the winner of the talent show was allowed to use the money they won from the talent show to hire people to develop the app for the coding competition, which just seems super counterintuitive because if it's a coding competition, they should be developing it themselves. You don't go to school to create ideas. You go to school to learn how to execute the ideas you already have. So learning how to actually code would have been smart. With all of these discrepancies, I couldn't even think about the romantic side of this book and I just really had a hard time with it. The next book on this list is probably one that is a very unpopular opinion and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This book just didn't sit well with me. I've read kind of a lot of books in the same vein as The Handmaid's Tale. I've read 1984 by George Orwell, I've read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, and I've read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and all three of those books for me, it felt like progression, even if it was like not in the right direction, it felt like progress, like society was making a progress. And in The Handmaid's Tale, it didn't feel like progress at all. It felt like a regression. And I felt like there was nothing like really explaining how the world got to be where it was. It's a dystopian future of our society in like 20 years or so. But there are just things that happen in the backstory of the book that I just don't understand how it could be possible. Like at one point they turn off all of the bank accounts to all the women in the United States and everyone was just kind of like, oh, okay, like fine, you can have my money or whatever. And it just didn't make sense to me that no one even cared about that. Also one of the world building parts of it is that there's a low fertility rate. For some reason that's blamed on the women and not the men, but it wouldn't really make sense because wouldn't we have the science to figure out who has the lower fertility rate or who's the problem in the relationship? So it just didn't work for me. I There were a lot of questions that I just felt like weren't answered and it wasn't really, a future that I could picture as being a progression of our own future. While there are definitely other similar books out there that I do feel like it is a progression. So it just didn't work for me. The next book on this list is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. So I started reading this at the beginning of the year and it took me pretty much all year to read this book. There are some old gods who have traveled over to America, but there's a new faction of gods rising up, and now there's going to be kind of a war between the old gods and the new gods, which I think the premise of this book sounds really interesting. It follows the main character of Shadow, who just came out of prison after his wife died in a tragic car accident, and on his way home, he meets a mysterious character named Mr. Wednesday, who we later find out is one of these old gods. It just follows Shadow around. There's some weird things happening. It gave me kind of supernatural vibes. Supernatural, the TV show, it felt a little bit like that. But I honestly just didn't like any of the characters in the book. I wasn't really that interested in following them. I think the ending of the book was really interesting when we actually, when everything actually just comes to a head. And I think the idea of this book is really interesting. I think his writing style is really well done. I just don't actually like the story, which actually made me really sad. The next book on this list is The Gunslinger by Stephen King. So I actually DNF'd this book six times before I finally finished it. It is one of the most boring books that I have ever read. So basically we're following the main character, Roland, who is the last gunslinger, and he is pursuing the man in black for the entire novel. He literally is just following him, miles and miles behind him, for the entire novel. It's literally a trek across terrain in this world. It's kind of like a post-apocalyptic world, but it's like also supposed to be a fantasy series. I don't exactly know. 
The ending I actually really liked, which is why I ended up giving it two stars, or else it would have ended up getting only one star. But like, it was just really boring. Like, this is a short book. It's a really short book. It shouldn't be a problem to get through. But I ended up doing nothing it six times because it's so boring. The reason why I was trying to read it that many times is because I've heard the other books in this series are interesting. And I have three of the other books in this series, so I really want to get to them. But you have to read this one first. I haven't had a really great year with Stephen King, but I'm really hoping his other books are better because this one did not work for me at all. So the last book on this list is Too Late by Colleen Hoover. Too Late is by far my least favorite book of the year. I found her for the first time last year and I've read most of her books now and I actually really like most of them. One of her books, It Ends With Us, is actually one of my favorites, but I really did not like this book. It's following the main character of Sloane who is stuck in an abusive relationship with her boyfriend, Asa, who is just a really terrible person all around. The first scene of the book is Asa basically raping her while she sleeps and I just honestly had trouble reading it. There were at times I thought maybe Asa will be redeemed a little bit, maybe it'll get better, maybe Sloan will finally leave him and honestly I don't remember what happened because I just started getting bored with it and I got to the end, I read the epilogue and then I turned the page and it continues for like another like 100 pages left in this book after I'd already finished the epilogue. I ended up DNFing it because I just couldn't continue on with it and I'm probably never going to read it because I'm just not that interested anymore. So that's all the books on my worst of the year list. I hope I didn't offend you too badly. Comment down below if you have some books that you also really didn't like this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!